when we look at this next slide, we're going to talk about vapor recovery. Vapor recovery. So we're going to see the system here. You're going to see the compressor, condenser, metering device, and evaporator. Well, let's take a look at vapor recovery. Vapor recovery. How do we do this? Well, since we're recovering, we're going to need a recovery machine. The recovery machine is going to pull the refrigerant out of the system. And first of all, what we want to do is hook up the center of the three hoses. We want to hook up the yellow hose to the inlet of the recovery machine. The machine is going to pull the refrigerant out of the system and is going to come out on the outlet. Now, if we want to open up the valve. When we open up the valve, we see that, yes, our pressure went up in the recovery machine. We're going to definitely need a scale and we're going to need a recovery cylinder. Now the scale is so we can keep track of how much refrigerant we have going into, into the bottle. Now the bottle, that's where the refrigerant is going to go through the hose that we attach it to like this. Then we open up the valve on the cylinder. If you notice, yes, it has two valves. One is blue. The other one is going to be red. Take a look at these valve handles. One of them is going to say liquid. The other one is going to say vapor, liquid and vapor. Now we want to hook up to the vapor side so that we can go ahead and start recovering refrigerant and the refrigerant is going to go into the bottle. If you notice, liquid goes into the bottle, it gets pulled out of the system, gets compressed, gets condensed, and then it goes into the recovery cylinder. With a scale, we can keep track of how much refrigerant we have going into the bottle. Now we can go ahead and open up the high side of the gauge manifold set. Once we open up the high side, we start pulling refrigerant out of the condenser, out of the receiver, out of the liquid line, and it comes out of the filter dryer and the sight glass. Some people call it sight glass or viewing glass. And all this refrigerant goes into the scale. It goes into the recovery cylinder. The scale is going to keep track of the refrigerant. We see that the level increased in the cylinder. So the scale will keep track of this for us. Remember, this recovery cylinder, if it's a 30 pound recovery cylinder, we should only put 30 pounds into it. At 30 pounds, the cylinder is going to be still only 80% full. 80% full. We don't want to top it off completely. So we must know how much refrigerant the cylinder can hold. If this was a 50 pound recovery cylinder, we could only put 50 pounds in there. And at 50 pounds, it would still only be 80% full. At 50 pounds, it would still only be 80% full. Now, once we have recovered most of this refrigerant, what's going to happen is we're going to keep recovering and we're going to pull the rest of the refrigerant out of the system and we're going to pull down to the prescribed level. Like we said before, let's say, for example, we need to pull down to four inches of mercury. We see that the pressure in the system dropped, the pressure on the inlet of the recovery machine drops, and we have pulled most of the refrigerant out of the system down to the prescribed levels. That's why you need to know what those prescribed levels are. Now this bottle will hold the refrigerant until we can take it to the recycling center until we take it to the recycling center. And once we have pulled down to the prescribed levels, we're supposed to close off the valves on the gauge manifold set and wait to see if the pressure increases. If the pressure does not increase, then we're okay. If it does increase, that means that we still have refrigerant mixed in with the oil and we need to recover some more refrigerant. We need to recover some more of that vapor refrigerant until we reach the prescribed levels. But this is what a vapor recovery is and this is how it is done.